forgot, uh, when you're in New South Wales, you've got to be wearing a life jacket if you're in the dinghy by yourself. So, going back to get it. Well, we don't wear skimpy bikinis. Hell, it frightens me when I take my shirt off. There's definitely no one pregnant here. This is motor sailing for old dudes. We do live on a boat, and we do cruise extensively along the Australian coast. Join us and visit some great destinations. Learn how to look after a boat and live off grid. It might even get you enthused to do the same thing. Hey, stay out there till you can't. Bits from a clock. I've got a job this afternoon. <laughs> Bruce just bought me a new quartz clock movement for my clock in the saloon. About 12 months ago, I took it to a jeweler, which you'd think would be a good place to take a clock to have it fixed, and he charged me 50 bucks. And it don't work. Same old thing on the boat. Do it yourself. Get someone else to do something, never works. So you've got to learn to do it yourself. So this afternoon, I'm going to show you how to fix a clock. This is uh, a ship's clock that uh, was given to me by my ex-wife Isabel. And it's got some sentimental value, a little plaque on the back, from back in uh, 1990, uh, 1999, so it goes back a way. But the movement in it uh, let me down. It's just a, a quartz movement and about 12 months ago it broke down so what i'm going to do i've never been a watchmaker don't profess to be one but what i'm going to do is try and pull this clock apart and put a new movement in it i got ruth to pick up this little quartz movement from j car 17 bucks and uh, we'll put that in and see if we can get this old clock going let's have a look and see what we need it is getting a bit weather worn, but I think that gives it a bit of character, eh? Okay. I'll just put something under there. A book or something. I need a small Phillips head screwdriver by the look of it, first up. Now because I like doing things myself, I carry most tools, so I've got um, plenty of little screwdrivers and things that I should be able to attack this with, so this was a nice little set. It's a Trojan set. I don't know what it cost me. It wasn't that expensive, but a nice small set of uh, Phillips head and straight screwdrivers. And um, why I bought that was for doing a bit of work on the drone. Uh, I had to pull that apart and do something on it a while back. So let's see if we can get this uh, clock face off. I guess we've got to take the clock face off, but we'll see. Something I've never been scared of is pulling things apart. I think if you can get over the fear of pulling things, some things I won't pull apart, like get inside a radio or something like that, I'm no good with electronics, but mechanical things, I think if you pull them apart and watch how you do it, you can usually get them back together again, so I don't think this clock's going to be too much of a drama. Famous last words. We'll see, eh? Very fine screws.
Don't want to lose them. Now, does that come out? I will lose those screws if I put them up there. Okay, so the whole the whole clock face has come out. Keep that clean. I think the case we can put that to one side. And old mate, he's done a great job. He's where one of the screws goes in here. Somehow he's managed to uh, break that bit of timber away. That's great. That's why the screw's not going in. So we'll probably even repair that while we've uh, we've got it apart. And this part of it shouldn't be that hard, I wouldn't imagine. A little pair of pointy nose pliers. A little nut that holds the hour hand on. Sure, what hand holds the uh, minute hand or the hour hand? Sorry, the minute hand I've got off. That looks like it just pushes on that one, and it never had a, a sweep hand on it, so I could never work if it, it would never work out if it was working. I'm not now. How easy is this to get it off? All I'm going to do is unscrew the little nut. And there you go. Ooh, yeah, so not sure what he's done there. He's got all sorts of washers in behind it to pack it back, I guess. That must be to keep it off the glass at the front. Alright, let's open here. Be careful, it's got these other little instruments on it, which aren't that accurate actually, but anyway, we'll have a look at them. Let's take your thing apart here. Not many instructions, tells you what battery it uses, so that's about it. And what I'm going to do, he's packed the back of this out to get that bezel down close. I don't know if you're going to have to really do that because I think there's plenty of room under the glass. I'll just have a look. I'll put this back on. Well, even there's, on that one there's two... There's two nuts, you could pack it out from the back actually, wouldn't be a problem. So in this pack here, there's two little lock nuts, so I think without too much problem, I'm going to be able to get these bits out and have a look. It's got a little packer there as well. I think I put a rubber packer behind it just to give it a bit of friction. But... I'll just try this for a start. I'll just see how much room I've got under the glass. That's all I want to find out for now. So I think I've got a fair bit. I'll just put that nut on there. And then if I get my housing back up, just be careful of all my little bits and pieces. All sorts of washers and things there for doing lots of different things. I'll just sit that in there. I reckon there's a quarter of an inch to that um, on top of that thing, so we might take it in a little bit just in case the hands do rub on the glass as they're going around. You wouldn't want that because that would affect it. Now, how are we going to mount this? I think I'm going to throw that bezel away because it's too long anyway. This little part is too long, it won't lock up on the thing, so I think what I'm going to do is lose that. I'll put 
put that through there. I'll have to just center it up as best I can. Okay, let's just pull that whole movement down. Let's just pull that whole movement down onto the clock face, which is good. I like that. That looks pretty damn good. Now what I'm going to do, because there's a bit of vibration on boats, I'm just going to put a lock nut on there. I might just nip him up just a little bit more. Pulling down onto the rubber at the back of it. Put a lock nut on there, that should stop any vibration. It shouldn't get much vibration there, but anyway. Okay, so we've got the little uh, quartz in there. Now I've got to pick out which um, hands I need. And I guess it's either those ones or some plain ones. Or I could even put on the ones that came off. But I think these ones are going to look all right. So let's try with these. I think this one just presses on by the look of it. That one. And then this one goes on the top here. And then I guess this one goes on the top. So before we put it back together, let's just slot a battery in and see if it works. Oh, look at that. It's up and running. Beautiful. Okay, now we've done that what about a little bit of a repair to this don't know how we do that fix the strip screws pretty easy I'm just going to put a put a um, a toothpick in there. Okay, that'll fix that hole up. The others I think are alright. Get a screw in here that will give me Toothpick, so it should be going all right. It's gone in tight, not stripped anymore. All I've got to do is draw. I'll draw one more hole about there, I think, and that'll. Bit of a. Pop. 
pilot hole. Beautiful. Okay, it's all fixed in. Shutting the glass, not going to rub on anything. It's all good. I'll tell you what, I reckon that's a pretty good job. I'm very happy with that. And we've got the um, second hand sweeping around there as well, which is sometimes handy. So now I'll just um, stick it back up on the wall where it belongs. Just goes to show if you can build a boat, you can fix a clock. <laughs> <laughs> 